So I'm going to ask a really simple question. Is anyone really surprised at the results of YCS Cancun? I don't think anyone is surprised at this. You might be a little mad that uh, Flaunderies ended up taking first place, right? Like, why does this deck still exist? Why does Shifter still exist? Is Harpy's Fetterstorm still a card? You know, real good, simple questions about the game. I think, like... It's kind of funny that this ended up being Kashira's final big event before um, the September ban list, and we see Kashira and Unchained are pretty much like even. Like, so Kashira's at 25, Unchained's at 21.9, which means really the difference is like one listing, right? Like, so there is like one. If one more Unchained player would have made it to top 32, then this would have they would have been exactly the same and. That really boils down to, like, when you look at the bigger picture, like, there was, like, what, like, 700 people there, I think? Like, I'm sure there's some Unchained players who got sacked somewhere along the way, some Cashier players who got, you know, m maybe they got a little lucky along the way. Not saying that that's what happened, but I'm saying, like, that's what could have happened, and it's, like, it, it, it very well could have been, like, neck and neck Unchained and Cashier, right? But the fact that both decks pretty much showed up pretty well, and the fact that Unchained is not getting touched on this next ban list while Kashira is losing their best card. Kind of funny. It, it is kind of funny. <laughs> um, and because this is top 32, that means that there is 8 Kashira, uh, 7 Unchained, 3 Flu, and then 2 of all these other archetypes you see here. And then about 6 other decks that like that were a little more fringe, right? Flaunderies, I think the main reason why they're able to top is... Just because if Cash is the best deck, Floanderies will always have a place because they can play under Shifter. Unchained can play under Shifter, but they don't have follow-up play under Shifter, right? Like, you can have your first turn under Shifter, but your turn two and your turn three are just not as strong because you need to set up the graveyard. You need Yama in graveyard. You need to get, you know, if, if things aren't getting destroyed and sent to graveyard, how is... What is um, Soul of Rage supposed to recycle back? You know, how are you supposed to get Yama's effect? How are you supposed to get um, the blue doggy to to revive itself, you know? Um, how are you setting back with Sharama? You may be able to get a like a like a um a abominable un unchained soul effect off, but it's and that being said, it's still like not a bad deck when you're under shifter, but it's it, it's just it just weakens its turn it, its later turns. It weakens the grind game for the deck because now it's like it cannot access a lot of the cards that you use turn one if you have to combo off turn one to play the game. Shifter is going to stick around, but I wonder how many of these Kashira players seeing the results of this event might go on to play Floanderies, even though Floanderies is a flawed deck with a really strong concept, but like with obvious flaws. Like the flaws of Floanderies are obvious. You stop the normal summon, you stop the turn. Also, the fact that they have the chance to brick, which is why they need so many openers like Prosperity, Duality, um, Field Spell. They, they, they need a lot to get going, but once they get going, it's hard to stop them once they get their their flow going, <laughs> for lack of a better word. I mean, it's not even like Flaunderies is amazing. I think Pearly is just a strong Minadium, is a really strong underrated contender, uh, Br Branded or even Branded Chimera still pretty strong i think these more fringe decks or these more like tier two ish kind of decks are still just enough to compete with flaunderies again the flaunderies could have sacked some of his opponents um with like fetter storm or something and that might have gotten gotten them a few wins also surprisingly only one dragon link uh, maybe because of kashira's big um presence in the event dragon link couldn't do as well because how are Bastille supposed to banish from Grave if you don't have access to the Graveyard, right? And also, Kashira does not lose to Bastilles at all because none of them are light or dark except for a Rise Heart. And banishing a Rise Heart, really not a big deal. Like, not a big deal at all. So if you go into the listings, literally it's the same amount of Unchained and Kashira in top 8. R really happy Rescue Ace made second because, like, the deck is really strong. But I think it's somewhat like Floanderies, where although it has a strong concept, a strong foundation of setting four, it does have the ability to break and stuff. So it's not as consistent. Like Floanderies and Rescue Ace are not as consistent as like Cash or like Unchained, because Cash can can sort of play low to the ground. All they need is like one unicorn plus, um, 
literally all they need is like one unicorn or field spell or something unchained all they need is literally any two cards in their engine and rescue ace and flow are kind of like ha you have to play a lot of consistency cards to make the deck more so you can open a lot of those um cards that get you started but interesting to see that Flanderies also made it to top 16 like Flanderies and pearly still making it in top 16 it's like they, they weren't completely screwed up math mech still making it i i do still think like cybers doesn't lose unless you make negates against them like you you have to negate the circular you have to negate the uh heat soul the transco like because otherwise they can get a really good um card advantage on you and link climb like crazy and also a dinosaur player made it into top 32 that's that's good i know this says like two branded one chimera i I guess this means like regular branded, like just puppet lock branded, and the Chimera means like Chimera branded. Um, so first place, right? Uh, we do see him teching one copy of Herald of the Abyss here, and that's like for Pearly, um, for Arise Heart, a really great going second card. And I guess because of their triple prosperity and triple duality, they, they don't feel the, and, tr and double triple tack uh, thrust. They don't really feel the need to max it out. Also, it's kind of funny that this fucking continuous spell, it basically outs so many things in the game, even a Rise Heart. So I could see why this deck could climb the ranks in a format full of Kashira, because with only one a Rise Heart, all I have to do is just tribute summon and a Rise Heart's gone. Like, <laughs> one Eaglin beats a Rise Heart, unless it already has three materials. But even then, like, I'm still getting the extra normal summon, even if a Rise Heart fucking banishes. Yeah, I could see Cash having a hard time against Flandries if they can't like break down the board. Cause I don't think Cash is good at breaking boards. They're the it's more about like having the best grind game when it comes to winning with Cash Dira. Yeah, so a lot of people were, were on Cash Burnout for like the past few months, um, which is why more people went to Unchained, but now it's like people kind of respect I feel like people should now respect Unchained for like what it is. It is objectively the best deck post ban list and then post age post age of overlord maybe not i don't think the jack atlas structure deck is going to influence the meta too much some people might find some sauce with it but from from what i can tell you need to open bone archfiend or you need to open uh the level three resonator to start your turn so it's like if it only has like two two good starters to play the deck i don't think the deck's gonna be that crazy even if it could summon Calamity, I, I don't think it's going to be that crazy. So Unchained doing well. I really want to see this like Rescue Ace list. Um, yeah, so everyone's on the DDD Vice King Requiem, I think that's its name, and Dark Contract because it just because it it, it kind of works out because if uh, Wave King Caesar is sent to grave, it gets to search a Dark Contract, and I guess because. Vice King Requiem is, um, it can, like, destroy cards you control, I believe. Yeah, so it can summon itself from the Pendulum Zone, um, and after summoning itself from the Pendulum Zone, it could shuffle back a, a Dark Contract in Grave to pop any card on field, including, you know, either whether it be your opponent's cards or your own. So it could be a combo starter, or it could be a board breaker in a deck that, like, could use either right like it, it could the fact that it gives you so many options is kind of kind of busted i'm not even like that like uh knowledgeable and freaking unchained and i i still understand that like being able to search an unchained and mill the blue dog at the same time because you're because you can chain block yama with a uh, phoenix rhino warrior is pretty good pretty good and yeah fenrir just sitting there at three help break boards and it's like there's really no card in this deck that says negate like other than like other than ash there's no card in this deck or like even in this extra deck except for like wave king caesar that says negate on it so it's actually kind of funny like how well this deck is doing because it rewards interaction and it rewards like knowing how to make the most of you know combo lines and how to play around hand traps because you could play straight into hand traps now what's really interesting is that we started to see ultimate slayer in this guy's side deck even though it was a cash to led event with a rice heart only being at one i think siding in ultimate slayer is 
a really good way to um, outplay or outmaneuver a lot of um, decks these days. Now, what's really interesting is that he's not even side decking any fusions or synchros or anything. So this is most likely just for the mirror match. It's just for the mirror match that he's playing like the, the ultimate slayer. So maybe he can mill like a soul of Yama. He can pop something and then he can banish Yama, summon something back, right? And then like that helps you turn two not only extend into possible OTKs, but also stop your opponent from disrupting your combos, like stop them from getting their unsold, their unchained soul of rage on your turn. Dino's also made it, and really glad to see that they're playing the Frostosaurus with the Xeno Meteorus. They're not playing any of those weird, big, new Transcendrakes from Wild Survivors. I think Dino's is, has always been like under the radar. Ever since they bought like Livestagen back to three, Dino's have always just been like a good deck to play because the amount of resource you can get off of a single baby source pop is like way too good. Y you basically loop the babies until you get the board that you're looking for. And it's more threatening than it seems. Like I was playing Rescue Ace and I may have made a few mistakes, but like Tyranno is a legitimate hard card to play around when you're playing a deck like Rescue Ace compared to like maybe some of the other cards, especially like if they have Lost World, you can't book a moon it, you have to use Eclipse. And the fact that they also benefit from like Dark Hole and stuff means like Unchained may not be the best deck against uh, Dinos. It, it, it could be a good rogue option, I think. Uh, a little sad that they're not showing the Rescue Ace list, but yeah, I mean, is anyone really surprised at the results of, of this event? Um, I'm sure not. Why don't you all let me know in the comment section down below. Um, this has been your boy Nistro here, signing out.